Hello listeners and watchers and subscribers and fans. Welcome to another chapter of the SDR Disco Call Show. I'm your host, Neil Buyan, and this show is all about sales development or SDRs that are working in the world of tech sales. And what we want to bring our audiences are insights as to what's going down in these careers, how to best navigate, and obviously, you know, what does it feel like to be an SDR in this industry? And I'm your host and guide. And with our guest today, this is somebody that I met via LinkedIn uh, after seeing a couple of their posts and, you know, wanted to learn more about this person. So we got down, we got chatting, and here we are today. So, guest, for our listeners and watchers, could you please introduce yourself as to who are you? Yeah, thank you, Neil. Uh, it's been first great to be here, so online here. <laughs> so, uh, I'm Ahmed Albayrak. So I live in Istanbul with my lovely wife and two cats. And I'm an SDR, outbound SDR for Cloud Talk. Thank you very much for the introduction and saying hello to your wife and to your two cats out in Istanbul. Really love it. And as a general reminder for our listeners and watchers, if you're listening to this in your local podcast platform, please give us a like and a rating so that we can be heard by other people out there. And you can also record a voice note uh, via your podcast if you have any messages or feedback. And equally, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, please make sure that you like, comment and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions for the guests, please put them into the comment section. So, Ahmed, as you mentioned, you're in Istanbul, Turkey, and you're an SDR for uh, CloudTalk, and you do outbound SDR. What does CloudTalk do, and how do you provide that service to, to CloudTalk? CloudTalk is basically a phone software for customer success, customer support, and sales teams, Neil. And it provides automations, you know, when it comes to calls, incoming outgoing inbound outbound calls we automate that stuff love it so you're the right guy to call if we're looking for a connection I love of that. course <laughs> uh, and Amit, with all of our guests that come onto the show it's always good to know like what do you like to get up to or what are your interests outside of sales yeah i have actually wide variety of interests you know my mind is some kind of too curious to learn new things every day. You know, mm. I hate being stuck at some point. So I want to improve myself in various ways. So I graduated from international relations and political sciences. And, you know, I went in there because I love philosophy, sociology, you know, it's like poli politics. And other than that, I love go going to gym and train uh, regularly to stay strong and you know also for mental health mm -hmm. it's more, it's for for me more for mental health when you are in sales yeah and i also love to travel a lot and but actually not much but if i after i uh, married to my lovely wife barack you know it's like i started to loving it mm. and yeah that's basic i am also a self-taught web developer so Ooh. i can also build websites you know for my future projects i wanted to have a hard skill as well so it's important so that's it i love that thank you very much so a man with a, a strong mind a strong mindset a strong body and a, a great marriage as well so shouts out to barack as well um and it's always good to upskill yourself as well so a man of many trades and many talents i love it and again we really welcome you coming on to the show today Thanks. so for our watchers out there uh watching the video version of this show what you know what we normally do at this point is we share our screen and we visit amit's linkedin profile uh, and as a gentle reminder with all of our guests we'll be putting their linkedin profile in the description and in the show notes so if you want to reach out and connect with them feel free to do so but Ahmed, uh, you're somebody who's quite active on LinkedIn. That's how I've come across you uh, in the past few weeks or so. Um, and we can see like you've got different experiences. And again, you've got also information about how you can sign up for the sales fellowship, which we'll come on to in a moment. But looking at your career in the different facets that you've done, we can see that you know, you've been an international business manager, you've been an export sales representative, you've been a freelance language teacher, an outsourcing consultant, a content moderator, an SDR NK Trading GmbH, you've worked at Mitt Clyde, 
uh, Cloud Talk as an outbound SDR, and also the founding member of the tech sales in Turkey. So, Amit, in your own words, could you kind of walk us through, you know, your journey and how did you get to where you are today, sir? Actually, Neil, it's a, I don't know if it's an interesting story, but, you know, I just wanted to become a diplomat for ah. uh, Turkey. But, you know, it's like there was a coup d'etat in Turkey in 2015. And after that, things got a little complicated, you know, working for government was a little risky and, you know, government <laughs> was also risky right now. Love to Erdogan. I don't want to go yeah. to jail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, I decided to go for uh, working. And, you know, I speak uh, English and as you can understand yep. German as well. So I just wanted to, I like to get to know new people from different cultures. So mm. I want to get into sales. And the first thing to came to my mind is, as a young Ahmed, I thought, hey, medical, everyone needs medical. So it's mm. a strong industry. So let's jump in. And I aimed for small companies because I wanted to learn all these things in, in a shorter time frame. Mm. So I started to working there. But actually, you know, it's like I was too, you know, too excited about my job, you know, after I learned everything in a month, mm. I got an, another offer from another company in Turkey to build their um, export team and export sales team. Mm. And I just accepted it. It's not on LinkedIn, but when I go there, I just stayed there for one month. Nothing was ready and all that stuff. So it was quite disappointing for me, but I learned a lot. Yeah. So I thought, Ahmed, Calm down. I know you're young, <laughs> but slowly, take things slowly. Mm. So after that, I just uh, went to another medical company, Cardimet. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for a time, for five months, as I can remember. It's, it's been a long time. Yeah. And I just, in that time, actually, I felt a little depressed. So there are things you know, that you can sometimes can explain, can understand. Yeah. And I just wanted to take a break from customer facing positions. Okay. So I just changed to Connectees at that time. They were newly forming uh, a company in Turkey. There's, they are in, in BPO sector, so outsourcing and consulting. Yeah. And I just started there as a, uh, for content specialists. Yeah. And uh, what I learned that I gained their great friendships mm. and, you know, we just, we just uh, worked on different projects and with different people. And I just wanted to get back to sales. Just, I recovered myself also mentally. I just mm. met with Barack as well at okay. that time. So if we can pause you there, because that's some really great insight and there's some questions that I want to ask where, you know, you wanted to start this working career. You're somebody very excited, like you'd learn like uh, exponentially in the space of one month. And then you learn a hell of a lot again in five months. And you're, you're kind of telling yourself, right, I'm going to slow down a little bit. And then you went into this new career um, where you learned a lot of good things over those five months. And then you kind of come, became a little bit depressed about stuff. And you kind of said to yourself, do you know what? I don't want to do this customer facing thing for a moment. And then you obviously went into this new career where you're consulting and doing BPO. And obviously you met your lovely future wife, Barack, at this point as well. And then you kind of yeah. said to yourself, right, I'm ready to go back in. Uh, and, you know, you've kind of like healed yourself to an extent. So can you help me understand, you know, as a young person that's got a lot of emotions going on where you're excited, but then you're, you know, demotivated by something and then trying to get yourself back into it and taking that break? Because that takes a lot of self-awareness and reflection. How were you able to handle that? And what advice would you give to people that may be in a similar situation, Ahmed? Actually, I always, what I learned, you know, I was a douchebag. So in the <laughs> university, you know, it's like, because I learned three languages, you know, I was like, a, they called me Vicky Ahmed, you know, it's like, Wiki, like from Wikipedia. Wiki, yeah, I know yeah. so many unnecessary stuff. And I felt like, you know, my ego was blowing. 
mm. at that time. You know, it's like I know German as my mother tongue. You know, it's like I'm so good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. But what I learned during the university, hey, you know, it's like I'm. We are all going to die, mm. and I'm actually not because I okay. met people who are far more intelligent <laughs> than as I am, mm. and just said, okay. You know, it's like when you think you are perfect, but when you just subconsciously think also, you don't, you know, no one says this, hey, I'm perfect or something, but yeah. we, we tend to think like that. So I just beat that for myself, just talking with every people, even on the streets who is on, living on the street and just talking to them and just evaluating myself every day, what mm. I'm doing. How, how I am feeling right now, you know, how my ego reacts when someone says bad things to mm. me and just, you know, just try to take it for me and just being a real, getting, being a real humble person. You know, it's, mm. it's hard, you know, for a time and <laughs> I was too young and, you know, it's like, and all that stuff was hard. But after you achieve that, you actually opens it also opens your mind. You know, mm. ego closes. If you have, you can have the old intelligence, 200 IQ, but if you don't have, if your ego closes your mind, you know, your sight, and you just stay there. So I just beat that. So mm. that's why it helps me to, you know, to evaluate myself, you know, it's like how I am right now. So just stop, yeah. stopping everything. Don't think about anything, work, family, just myself hey how are mm. you doing mate asking just myself yeah and I, I think that's a very like good skill to have so like for listeners and watchers like as you may know i, I go on about this thing called self-awareness and you know sometimes when we're going through jobs and careers and we're trying to figure stuff out you know sometimes we don't know where we want to go or we don't know if this is the right job for us or you know, we we can sometimes struggle to ask ourselves a question like, how are we feeling about this? And, you know, like, again, I'm a big fan of like journaling and diarying and like doing meditation and stuff like that. And ego is something that we all have and it's an element of us and it's not to be ashamed of, but it's how we feed that ego, how we talk to ourselves. So, you know, um, you know, being very humble in the sense and hum humility and being humble are two things that go hand in hand. And it's, you know, making sure that we don't talk ourselves out of things and we don't talk badly to ourselves. So, you know, at points where we're learning new stuff, like we feel like on top of the world, Ahmed, like we've got this skill, we've got that. Yeah. Why, why shouldn't I be entitled to this? And yeah, I should do. And there's this thing that I've recently learned in therapy and in psychology called uh, shadow work. Yeah. So shadow is an element of you it's that person that you know gives you the negative feedback the critique um it's also this side of you which is a dark side of you and i've had this thing in my life where i've tried not to listen to my shadow because i think it's just this negative dude that's going to talk me out of a lot of stuff but also with the shadow it's that thing that protects you you know so yeah. where i was an sdr sometimes i would have a manager saying you need to do this you need to do that and you should be doing this and you've effed up on this and you've done that and done this whereas before i'd let some people walk all over me and talk badly to me and then i'd start believing in that and I'd, the way i talk to myself but it's also that shadow that would be like no do you know what you need to stand up for this you need to have these boundaries of you know what you will and what you won't allow and most recently, I'm doing a lot of shadow work, um, and it's this dark side of you, but it can also, to your point, like affect your mental health. It can depress you. But that shadow can also be like, do you know what, Neil? F the world. This is what it is. You need to get yourself back up, and you know you are going to be something good. And I've struggled many of years listening to that guy. <laughs> yeah. you know? but, but it's something that we should always remember. And like ego, shadow, these are parts of us, you know? Exactly. So it's really good to hear that you were able to, to get out. And I'd love to continue that story of, you know, you, you meet Barack, you're, you're kind of figuring out that you want to go back into facing people and sales. Like what, what happened after this point? So after that, you know, I was always a relationship builder. I'm mm. just like, I love to invest in people. You don't have to have much money or something. You know, you don't have to have any money, just giving them your friendship offering them your friendship is enough. 
Yeah. So, so I learned my new company owner. I know his son. So I met him. He was a great guy, Mr. Karapunar. <laughs> so we started working together. He offered me, we just started part-time. So just, I helped them to find some clients, etc. Then we started working full-time with him. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, you know, the economic struggles in Turkey rose again mm. with our beloved government. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, you know, it's like some of my, my deals, I was after big companies in Turkey and also in Germany. So I thought that, okay, you know, everything stopped because the Turkish uh, lira devaluation at that mm. time was too high. You know, it's like, it was crazy times. Everything was a mess. You know, I was about to close a big deal, but they stopped everything because, you know, it's like they can't foresee the future, the near future, even one week <laughs> from yeah. now. So... And I found myself to look at Bloomberg's website, Forex website, you know, it's like mm -hmm. exchange rates, it's going higher and higher. I couldn't concentrate me on anything. Mm. So, but it's a bad thing for me also, not also for work, also personally, you know, just like you just think about, hey, how is, what is going on there? You know, it's like, what, how should I care for my family and all that stuff? So, okay, I said to myself. Let's, you had a big uh, passion for tech always, mm -hmm. and let's start learning coding. You should add this skill to you as well. Mm -hmm. So adding, you know, it's like I wake up 6 a.m. every day regularly to, to just give me, you know, the time I need because time is so precious. Sometimes I don't understand. For example, people who are looking for time-killing apps, you know, it's like I'm going... <laughs> crazy with this, you know, it's like time is what I need. I, if I could have, you know, if it were enough for me to sleep five hours a day, I would, or four hours, I would, but mm -hmm. I can't, you know, it's like, it should be, you know, in a balance. So I just yeah. slept six hours is enough for, <clears throat> sorry. sorry. And I just started to learn coding and then the idea came up, Hey, everyone is looking someone for the German speaking region as an SDR and it's a great job. So you just build relationships. And I just met Mattia from SDRs of Germany mm. at that time. You know, I attended events, you know, I got rejected so many times from other companies and, the, but I learned a lot through, mm. you know, so I just ask every time I just ask for feedback, you know, I'm just a feedback geek. Now, mm. Give me feedback. You know, how was it? Your honest yeah. feedback every time. And I just, the last time this was cloud talk and I met with my hiring own manager and everyone was great. And I said, okay, this is my place. And the tool was always also important because, you know, economic struggle is recession is everywhere. So it yeah. should be a have to have product, not nice to have. Mm. So it's a phone solution. So every, almost every company needs it at some point. So, okay. Cloud talk is a good choice. So mm -hmm. I started working there. I love that. I love that. So there's quite a lot of pieces that I want to pick apart in there as well, where, you know, you talk about this element of relationship building, which I think is very key. And I'd love you to kind of elaborate a little bit more on that in terms of what does relationship building mean to you? And, you know, what advice would you do for SDRs that are, you know, about to start building relationships within business as well? Another point I'd love to pick on is this idea of coding. Like, how did you come up with that idea and what was it that was driving you towards it? Um, and then obviously, you know, entering this world of SDRing, being introduced to the SDRs of Germany and, you know, getting that networking going on. Like, what led you to that based on your previous background and, you know, kind of what was you thinking? Um, because again, as you mentioned, you're looking at the economic si situation, you're trying to see where is the longevity, where can you go, where, you know, you'll be able to provide uh, and survive as well. But, yeah. um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to come in. So on the first topic of, you know, coding, why coding and what brought you there? Uh, actually I was, when I were in Germany about 12 years ago, mm. 
I was always interested to build websites, you know, getting to HTML code, CSS, CSS codes, you know, adding something, making, publishing it. And it was with uh, low code tools at that time, you know, mm. it was truly <laughs> not good looking. Mm. But after that, you know, I, when I came back, actually the system, I want to be, I wanted to be a, comp a engineer. So for computing and IT, uh, but you know, the system shows me that I was in the middle of the high school. I came back to Turkey again mm. and you know, I have to, I had to choose, you know, bef between different social, there was a social, uh, side for, and for uh, analytical side, mathematical side. So yeah. you have to choose between, of, between two. So, you know, the other ones, the other topics for. Uh, different topics. I didn't know because in Germany it was more relaxed. So when it comes to education, so I choose that way. So when I came back with this idea, because I loved it. So it also helps me. I love to solve problems. Mm. So I, I came, I came to coding with, you know, real expectation, not like, Hey, I will do tons of money. You know, it's like oh, coding. You know, it's it's, it's yeah. a super thing. It's super fun. I know it's hard. And I know you have to solve problems. You have to fail a lot. And, mm. but you know, it's like you go again, fail again. It, it's, there is a bug and you get, you go again. So I just jumped in, but before doing everything, you know, every jump, what I do is a proper research at first. Mm. I looked at so many websites, YouTube videos, because there are lots of bad content, F content out there <laughs> for <laughs> coding because everyone you know, thinks that, you know, so just giving a course or uh, introduction to any programming language is a good thing. But I found the right ones and I prepared a plan for me. So mm. what I want to do is a web development. <clears throat> so what I need to do, I learn, I need to understand the logic first. Yeah. Because the fundamentals is very important. Then I start HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yeah. So, and through that, JavaScript is the main holy Bible of web development. So I need to be really good at it, not mm. jump to any frameworks to work on React or Vue or other ones. Mm. So I just learn. And by learning, I don't do, you know, it's like watching the course and taking notes. No, you have to understand logic and you have to do it by yourself. That's all yeah. about. So just, I failed, failed, you know, just like, it was a crazy time for me, but I also enjoyed it. I <laughs> so love I'm that. still doing it. So, And it, it's good to like have the, these passions and it's kind of akin to like where you said you, you've done multi languages such as German as well. And like coding is another form of language and it's something yeah. that, you know, can be self-taught as well. And it kind of reminds me back in days of college when uh, I was studying like a multimedia course and Visual Basic was part of it. So building programs and games and stuff. Uh, and it was kind of like reminding me of like seeing the matrix, like you're seeing all these code lines going up to then build an end product and thing. Now, yeah. truth be told, I haven't really used any coding language since those days of college. But when I've used software or when we were building our website for Happy Selling, if there was anything wrong or, you know, there's a bug in one of my Chrome tools, sometimes I can check code and then I can see what the glitch is. Or if I'm talking yeah. to a support team and they're saying, oh, we can't figure it out. And then I can, you know, open up the developer mode of my Chrome and I can see where things are breaking down. Or if my laptop crashes, I kind of get an understanding as to what's gone wrong. And it's like you say, speaking uh, another language and it's a good yeah, skill set to have. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's like... You know, the whole thing with like happyselling.io, a lot of people ask me like, why do you have happyselling.io as your domain? Um, and I've seen this prominent in a lot of startups and I learned this from a startup I used to work for called intuo.io. And I remember speaking to the CMO and saying to him, why do you have .io at the end of it and not .com or .be for being in Belgium? And they said, Neil, like we're a so software startup company and .io stands is coding language for input output. And I was like, yeah. ah. That's pretty cool. So when people are saying, what's with happy selling .io, and I'm like, it's coding. Like you put happy selling in, you get happy selling out. So, yeah. uh, that might be a bit of a geek moment for everyone out there and maybe something you didn't know before, but yes, coding, I think that's a great skill set to have. But in terms of the next skill set, um, coming off the back of, you know, 
your story where you said being a relationship builder is something which is very important to you and key being an SDR or salesperson or person in general Absolutely. in life in your own words, Amit, what does relationship building mean to you and why do you feel that it's important? You know, what I discovered, all the, the events they I attended, you know, it's like everyone just make cold calls, send generic emails, tons of emails, have your, fill your activity quotas. And, and I was like, at the end, if you're lucky, you know, getting conversation out of 100 calls, book one meeting with one of them. Hmm. And you, in that sense, or you also use so many tools. So you make actually things too complicated because at the end, we are not selling to another software. We are selling to a human being. Yeah. So it has its own problems, you know, and, and own struggles and own feelings. And what we fail, you know, when we just, we also forget the emotional side of decision-making processes mm. at the day, daytime. You know, it's like we just, hey, they just make rational process. You know, when it's good, they can then buy. No, there is some cases that you can, for example, for cloud talk, there are lots of competitors out there. Most mm. probably they can evaluate two or three solutions at the same time. Yeah. So, but... You know, if you have a great relationships with relationship with the decision maker and you have the same offer standing on the table, who, uh, which solution will he, she choose? Yeah. The guy <laughs> who builds a relationship, you know, not the guy mm. who just sent the cold email and they're just looking for it and uh, accepted the demo. And the other things that we forget is as an SDR, we can learn from everyone. From we can have insights of every company, also industry. It's so satisfying. Mm. But we just want to talk about our product. Yeah. And now, this is the main problem. I just, you know, what don't do is for building relationship. Yeah. And, you know, it's like there are also interesting stories. You know, I, when I could start right now, we could do it for six hours. I can explain to you different people's different stories. Mm. And I just wanted to learn them and give it to them to kind of people know people as well. And just, you know, people is not, you know, when you meet a decision maker, this decision maker knows other decision makers from other country, uh, companies. Yeah. yeah. We always forget that. Now, even the guys I met, and I was like, SDRs, account executives, knows other companies. They worked in other companies before. Yeah. And they could use a cloud-based phone solution. <laughs> and, you know, I have so many examples of that through getting through them, just by keeping the relationship with them, helping them with LinkedIn. I don't know. I booked 36 uh, meetings for other SDRs. Nice. As well. You know, it's like just helping them without expecting something in return. I don't have a secret mm. agenda, by the way. If you have, yeah. you can't be successful by building real trustful relationships. I just yeah. give to, you know, it's like the system, the mindset is right now, the capitalistic mindset in general, you know, when someone gives me something, I need to give it back or pay for it. Mm. And when I came there with, hey, wh why did why did you do that? I'm just, you know, it's like helping you. Is there any reason? No. Do you want something in back? No. And they're just surprised. <laughs> they're shocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, okay. And you actually break the wall of having a real relationship. And mm. other than that, then you have a friend at the end. You know, you can just ask, hey, man, you know, it's like we have actually this company. I know, you, I saw that you mentioned this guy on your post from other company. Actually, mm -hmm. they could use us. Also, they are helping me to get their company as well. <laughs> In some cases, I don't send any emails. They just talk yeah. their, to their managers on my behalf. You know? mm -hmm. It helps me this. Also for the future. When I leave this company, CloudTalk, when I would leave CloudTalk today, I have 60 co uh, companies to bring it to my next company. Yeah. So actually, you know, you don't have, you don't start by zero, 
when mm. you change the companies, with, when you do selling by based on relationship building. Love it. And I, I think, you know, this is a very prominent part uh, within your sales career on the concept of relationship building. And it's something that you can, you know, use across different facets of your life. It doesn't just have to go towards career. And, you know, like thinking back um, when I was an SDR and I was on LinkedIn and I was using the platform for the first time, the only way that I used to see it was I'd get off a cold call with you, Ahmed, and the first thing I'd do is just connect with you on LinkedIn. I didn't really know what else to do after that, right? Um, but I'm glad that I did it because that's what's helped me build up my network. So, you know, sometimes when I see somebody on LinkedIn saying, oh, does anybody know somebody that specializes in this? Or somebody talks about a specific topic and they want it to get some sort of like gravity behind it, you yeah. can add those people into it as well. And to your point, you know, when I was an SDR, I, I have this mindset of I never lose, I either win or I learn. And any time I got off a call where it didn't move forward in me booking a meeting, I would then say, right, here's an opportunity to learn something. So I'd speak to you as a decision maker on the phone and be like, do you know what, Ahmed, thanks for today. And perhaps we're not going to move forward in a meeting. That's totally fine. But do you just have a few moments because I'm trying to learn something? And the way when you position it that way, people love being able to educate other people. So you kind of give yeah. them a little bit of a platform and it boosts their ego a little bit as well. Yeah, ego management. <laughs> yeah, <themselves>. exactly. <laughs> and, and you'd say, so like, Ahmed, like, look, I'm a young sales guy and you're a VP of sales and I just want to know what made you take this call today and continue this conversation to the end? That's the feedback bit where you said you're a feedback geek. Like, I'd love to get that sort of feedback. And then if somebody responded to an email and they gave an objection, I'd be like, cool, do you know what? If it isn't a fit, I'm not going to push it. But I just wanted to know, what would you improve on this email to be able to speak to more people like you? And they would give that information. And, you know, uh, if I booked a meeting as an SDR and it went through to demo, but they kind of said to the account executive, mm, not for us, maybe we're going to pick this up next year, cool. I would then, you know, email the person after saying, look, really appreciate you joining today's call. Sorry to say it wasn't a fit, but, you know, really appreciate the time you've given. But just a quick question. When you went through that demo, what was a, a key thing for you? What buzzwords did you like? What did you like about the solution? And, you know, what kind of turned you off? Because I'd give them the premise that, you know, like whatever you say now is not going to affect our relationship or our deal, but I'm, I'm just curious yeah. to learn. Um, and then equally, like when I went into an account executive role, asking stakeholders once I closed a deal, like Ahmed, again, we did this deal with you. What did you like about this sales experience with us? And what do you think we could do differently next time? Um, these key things that helped me as an account executive, but also when I went into customer success, you know, uh, you'd have a decision maker that would never really be involved in the actual day to day use of the solution. So they just signed it off, but yeah. then you'd be working with a super admin, uh, and you'd be making them become a coach so they could coach their end users on how to use a platform. You'd ask them feedback. What did you like about the training? What did you like about the deployment? You know, uh, and when we did the renewal calls, I'd be like, all right, Ahmed, you know, we're going to happy to sign for another year. Great. Thank you so much. Quick question. Do you know anybody else that could benefit from using something like this today? And that's asking for the referral. And what I found out recently is like 92% of customers would be happy to give a referral, but only 11% of salespeople ever ask for the referral. You know, like even when I do this podcast, when we finish, yeah. I'm going to ask you the question. Uh, here's a behind the scenes moment. But Ahmed, do you know any other SDRs that'd be great to come on this show? And it's always asking those questions and trying to learn as well. And, you know, as you said earlier, it's that curiosity. Make sure that this job does not kill your curiosity. Answer those questions. Answer that feedback because that's how you build relationships. And yeah. again, I know I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but I do this in my personal life as well. You know, like when I used to be into music, I meet a lot of musicians, I do a lot of networking, I do a lot of shows and I meet other artists and I listen to their music and I give feedback and I share my music and say, what do you think of my beats? What do yeah. you think of my lyrics? And what do you think of my content and all of this? Um, and then when I meet friends that are going through mental health issues, like I will make recommendations to listen to Headspace, uh, meditation apps, or, you know, I'll say, come to this fitness class that I go to and see how you feel. And I'm always asking those people, like, how do you feel about this and compared to where you were before and, like, how you feel now? Yeah. And I'm one of those people, I was at a bar this weekend where one of my friends who's going through a hard time was like saying, Neil, you're just an easy guy to speak to. Like, why? a lot of people come to me to ask me for advice. And I give them advice and I help them out in life. And they're always like, but what are you doing this for? And my response to that is because I can. 
There's no monetary gain to this. No. There's no, you know, revenue to be generated. This and this even goes back to my sales days where, you know, I would sometimes advise a customer to go look at a competitor, a direct competitor of ours, and say, go, you know, educate yourself and tell us what you think. I don't want you just to buy our product because we say so. And they're like, you know, what's the gain here? And I'm like, the gain is just me being a nice person because I can. Yeah. You know, and sometimes when people say, well, how can I repay you? And as most of the watchers and listeners are seeing, I'm a big believer in the pay it forward. So Ahmed, if I've helped you out something today, rather than trying to pay me back in some nice way, do it to the next Ahmed who needs help. You know, that's struggling, that's in the same position as you. And exactly. this is kind of how I feel that you can build relationships and it's a cool skill to have. Yeah. And, you know, coming back onto skills and with your story of, you know, you came across these SDRs where you're doing networking, you're doing relationship building SDRs of Germany. What did an SDR mean to you at this point in time before you actually started doing it? And kind of what led you into that path of, you know, wanting to be an SDR, Ahmed? Actually, what SDR means for me right now, first, it's not an entry level job. We Hell yeah. need to stop with that. And it's getting to an AE position. It's not a promotion. Mm. So the thing is, the problem is, with SD, you know, the perception of SDRing is, you know, I don't know why companies want to put people, you know, it's like they are actually like, marketing robots, some kind of, because you're mm. the face of the company. When you contact people, when you have bad experience with you, you know, they, they are going to remember it. You know, it's like, Hey, I know this company from where, you know, it's like this guy, SDR called me in a bad situation. You know, I just wanted to go, but he didn't listen to me. He just tried to pitch his product, her product. Mm. And, you know, it's like, um, if I need it, I will never going to buy from them. Yeah. So, SDR is a relationship builder. SDR is a connector, a networker, a consultant. Mm -hmm. But no company trains their SDR to teach about the other products, the complementary ones. Even they just give some facts about the competitors but they don't tell the truth actually. Mm. You know, it's like, for example, you know, I work in customer support. I need to know also in sales, I need to know the tools, the sales stacks, you know, which one is good for what, when someone needs a sales intelligence tool, I need to know it. Mm. When someone needs another tool, a sales engagement tool, I need to know it. So I, someone needs an email tool, personalization tool at scale. I need mm. to know it. So I started learning it by contacting other SDRs. You know, the, mm. actually the idea of sales fellowship came through that, with that. Mm -hmm. Just shaped with people so far I met. It's about 90 people that I met so far in this two, three months. I love that. I love that. And you're, you're right, getting that insider knowledge and knowing you know, what's in your industry? What's going on? What do people need? And, you know, what do those solutions mean? And, you know, I 100% agree with the whole thing of the SDR position is just not an entry level position into a company. It's the entrance to a whole company. And it's not just yeah. one linear role to become a closer and account executive. I've, I've lived and breathed that life. I've done, you know, all the commercial positions in a company. No. And, you know, where does this come from? I think it's like a legacy mindset of, I think when I started SDRing like 10, 12 years ago, the original thing was you'd have these BDs, these business developers that just build pipe and then just hand it over. And then the glory is then given to the account executive that close a deal and everybody celebrates that. Yeah. And it's a team effort, you know, without that SDR yeah. there, that meeting or conversation would never have happened. That wouldn't have piqued their interest. Um, and in a lot of tech companies where I've worked either as an SDR manager or as a coach, I've always like really pushed that when a deal closes that everybody celebrates from that. You know, exactly. who was the SDR that booked it? How did they go about doing it? What tools did they use? What methodology? And then, you know, handing it over to the AE, the AE would make sure that they give recognition to the SDR to say, great, booking the Almed in, like you did it through social selling. And, you know, I tried multiple times and couldn't get through. And then together you gave me great discovery call notes. 
um, which helped me, you know, run a really good demo, which then it closed it. And, you know, pushing the importance that this is a co-pilot thing. It's just, just not an individual fighter pilot Thanks, that man. won the race and everything like that. And to your point as well, like the knowledge, so a tip for the listeners and watchers out there is, you know, a lot of standard sales training companies do this two-week onboarding thing where they give you a week of product knowledge, watching demos, watching calls, and then they give you a little bit of prospecting training and expect you to go book stuff and be a great SDR. And when that's not happening, they're like, oh, what's wrong? And that's when they sometimes call Neil. But what I say in those moments when they call Neil is, you know, um, 80% of deals closed within the business come from the 20% of top sellers within their business. And it's those 20% of those top sellers that have 80% of the industry knowledge and insights that people are looking for. So they're not just looking for a guy that comes into a shop like Foot Locker and saying, yeah, these are the greatest pair of Nike Jordans that you're going to get. Oh. They want to know, you know, what are other people looking? What is the feel like? What other shoes are people looking at? You know, what things can you do to help keep it clean and all of this? Because if you come to a sales advisor that can give you all that insight and knowledge, you're the ones that are going to be producing those great deals and those great closes. So I say to a lot of SDRs, like, get to know your industry, you know, like, okay, if you're selling telephony, then understand what is like a data network, what do you need for like IP and what do you need to have in terms of, you know, uh, having it licensed, if you're going to have remote phone desks, in what country, exactly. what certification do you need and stuff like this. And a lot of them are like, where the hell do I learn this from? And I'm like, the best people that you can learn it from are your prospects. Because again, if you want to go book that meeting, uh, and it doesn't happen, then you can ask those technical people, like, why do you need to have this certified? And why do you need to have this? And where do you normally go find out your information? How do you keep up to date? This is stuff that you can learn. And then once you've learned yeah. it, and then you come across another prospect that has a, you know, a challenge, or they don't know how to set this stuff up, you can be the advisor, the person with industry insights and knowledge. And I think, I, you know, I that's think. super cool. Yeah. And another cool thing, which, uh, you know, I want to give props to as well is, the whole idea of this sales fellowship. So again, for our watchers, uh, I'm just going to quickly share our screen up on here on LinkedIn, because the thing that I saw with ArtMed in the last few weeks is this idea of wanting to shake things up a little bit and change things yeah. at the way that people are looking at sales. And I remember like when I was looking at your about section, changing B2B sales, those are big words, right? And they are indeed. And I've seen this used by a lot of different people over the years. And I'm like, okay, what is it? that you want to change? Is it the change on the way that you think about this or how other people see, see it? Or how are you, you know, going to actionable take this and actually create that change? Because I'm always a bit dubious about people that say they want to change shit. Because equally, I wanted to change stuff. Like five years ago, I got fed yeah. up of people not giving love enough to SDRs and giving them the right training and coaching to be successful and become future salespeople that I did something. I stopped, like I didn't focus my training on closing. It was pure prospecting and how to build yourself as an SDR. That's the change that I wanted to create within. And then seeing like a lot of great content that you're posting on and obviously with sales fellowship. So again, anybody that's watching the show or reading it, if you go into Armit's uh, LinkedIn profile, you can see the sign up for sales fellowship where you can fill in your forms and you can become part of this. But Ahmed, what is the sales fellowship about and what are you guys looking to change and how do you guys and girls do that today? What I, you know, it's like I made a lot of research and what I discovered is sales needs respect. Sales people needs, need credibility mm. because, you know, when I talk to people, hey, I'm a sales people, you know, it's like, they are like, Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah what do you want to sell to me come on yeah <laughs> you know it's like they're uh, i don't want to buy from you anything because mm. they're also right now i saw people i met with other sdrs account executives you know they are really savage <laughs> you know they are just you know it's like they are so annoying you know they are just bothering people you know they are just bother me i'm an sdr i'm not a decision maker i can mm. imagine how they treat their prospects yeah and also what everyone talks about empathy right in mm. sales it's the strongest thing everyone needs to have it but if you robotize sdr's job by having uh, activity will quote us like, you know, sending 100 emails, make 60 calls a day. It robotizes our job. When someone do it, it something, you know, the same thing regularly, it forgets, you know, it's like we are not, we are thinking that, you know, people are 
talking just they are just prospects not humans yeah you know, they need to answer all of our questions all of our generic emails and calls and what we are what we seek actually basically information mm. real information and we process this information identify the pain points if there is a use case then we say hey we can help you to solve this mm. and should be all about them not about our product yeah so i realized that in today's standards you know average manager have no time every meeting is delayed every project has something you know it's like every urgent meetings and all that stuff so you know they don't have time for this so what i do instead of going to tip of the mountain i just go to the entry level mm. go to sdrs bdrs account executives marketing specialists it specialists not managers mm. and arrange a call like you know so arrange a meeting and with sdr sales reps we pitch each other our products and we exchange uh, the information we identify the pain points together and after that when there is a use case for both sides mm. we exchange the right uh, contact in contact information of the right decision maker mm. and when i write an email with those information it's so relevant because i did my research i have a guy i put him in cc and mention it in my first paragraph just say hey he neil is a great guy you are you're lucky to have him to make you stand up in your own company nice. to you know it's like hey neil just don't just make calls he also brings you know suggest some products that could be useful for us hey he's mm. a different guy mm. and at the other hand you know it's like i get you know through my emails i get demos directly booked nice and so far actually you know it's like it's about 75% right now you know the emails that i sent directly to yeah these direct i don't i'm not talking about you know it's like industry is now talking about open rates reply rates yeah and you know it's like all that stuff with 3% they are happy you know it's like they are shouting out you know, <laughs> a, a sequence that reply rate is 6%. I'm just talking about direct demos because why? First in my emails I show respect. Hey, mm. I came to you well prepared. I talked with a, my potential user and identified the problems. And what I want to do is I showed you and my email structure is it's simple as possible. Problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution and a soft CTA at the end no demo scheduling link or something as it's also so disrespectful you mm. know you go to a guy you you say hey let's them have a demo let's go to a bar no 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 first wait <laughs> you know <laughs> show respect and yeah. just get the feedback first and after that what i do is you know it's like i want to you know through these demos i realized that i could build a system on it mm. because what i learned that i also built relationship with those sdrs sdr managers and people i talked to and i want to systemize it that we go sdr sales reps going to other sales reps they help each other and we create a working machine not a community with a slack channel or something just mm. a working machine that creates pipeline for all of us by helping each other mm. and it makes us also a consultant in time because you learn so many products from so many other SDRs like i became a net consultant mm. so i want to make sales fellowship name a brand so the decision makers can came to us hey there is someone from sales fellowship send me an email it should mm. be relevant or i have a, this problem i i can go any of the sales fellows because they don't try to 
sell me their product. They can help me to find the right solution for mm. me. Because everyone is working uh, each for each other. I want to create that machine on that. So we learn each other, we grow together, we book meetings because we make things fast. We don't waste time when there is no use case. Mm. You know, it's like we just go relevant. We send relevant emails and we go relevant LinkedIn messages and we share, we grow. And that's the basic idea of sales fellowship. It has some other phases, but Oh, it would be too hard. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So if I get it right and correct me if I'm wrong, Ahmed, so like sales fellowship, it's kind of like a, a marketplace to an extent where, you know, I'm an SDR and I come to the fellowship and say, right, this is what my product and solution does. And these are the type of people that I want to, you know, be interested in my platform. And then, you know, you get like-minded SDRs that bring their own solutions, their own things and stuff and use cases where they can help. And then, you know, a fellowship person like yourself says, right, I know such and such person or persona that needs a solution like this. Who could help with this? Everybody chimes in and says what might be a good fit and what kind of, you know, um, who'd be the right person or company for this. And then what you're able to do collaboratively is say, right, I know this person needs this. so I'm going to connect this SDR and have an introduction where it's, you know, personalized, it's relevant. And then the hope is that that person then can book a meeting. So you're helping other SDRs book meetings mm -hmm. by sharing knowledge. Uh, yeah. and you don't have to have this fear of all these SDRs trying to sell to you because, again, that's not the idea here, but it's yeah. the idea of sharing what they can do so that everybody can connect dots together. Is is that yeah. right in a nutshell? Yeah, it's right. And the thing is, you know, it's like I don't want to do something extra for sales fellowship. I just mm. want them to go to do normal prospecting mm. and go to, but instead of going to decision maker, go to the entry level of that company. Mm. And say, hey, I want to meet you. And when they say why, I give them a reason. Sales fellowship. Mm. Okay, what, what what the hell is sales fellowship? And this is this. Hey, we exchange our uh, information. Hey, we help each other. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. That. Let's go. And with that, actually, you just, you know, you have a list. You would, the, the members will have a list of all sales fellows with their, you know, personas, product descriptions, the problems they solve. Mm -hmm. And when someone reaches reaches them out, hey, actually, I need I need a dialer right now. Hey, I know Ahmed. Yeah. Actually, it's already working by for myself. You know, mm -hmm. I built you know I helped to book 37, 36 meetings for other SDRs, and they also helped me as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just tagging me when they see a, when someone is looking for a dialer or VoIP solution. I take mm -hmm. them, I help them. You know, it's like it's just working. I just want to really systemize it so you know so everyone can benefit from it i love and, that yeah in time you know when we grow uh, in time i it, i will not say you know it changed everything in one month or yeah. something but in time when we grow in numbers because everyone will do it it will grow from itself and we can say that hey we are sales fellows and this method works and everyone is more happy, everyone is more efficient because every outreach is based on quality, not on quantity. Mm. And this will change everything. Also, it's good for companies. They get what may more feedback for their products at the end. Mm. And good for decision makers, they only get relevant emails. I'm just, mm. you know, uh, imagining this right now. You know, my dream is to achieve that. That, you know, it's like when someone is a manager, they, get, they just get the marketing emails <laughs> <laughs> and uh, emails from um, sales fellows, you know, mm. but they don't get too many emails, you know, yeah. unrelevant, you know, it's like non-personalized, generalized emails. They just get relevant emails and everyone can work more efficient without disrupting their days. I love that. And the, the pertinent question here is, if I'm an SDR and I want to get involved with Sales Fellowship, what's the best way to do that, Ahmed? Right now, contacting me. <laughs> and, you know, I also, uh, because I need, it's, it needs a mindset, mindset shift. Hmm. Because don't expect results directly. Mm -hmm. Because it takes, because it's B2B sales. We are not selling chocolates. Mm. You know, you can't sign a deal when you book a meeting. Don't the, the client will not sign a deal tomorrow. Yeah. So we need to strategize. We need to 
change that. So, okay, this guy is, is not ready. You know, there are guys I will contact in seven months. You built actually a real pipeline for yourself as an SDR. Mm. You know, I have two companies that I will contact in seven months. Uh, another two in three months. You know, I just, you know, they are not the right moment right now. They said, I get honest feedbacks from those companies because, you yeah. know, I'm not bothering them. They don't want to get rid of me. You know, they just said, hey, Ahmed, it's great to talking to you. You know, I like your approach. But, you know, end of the contract is in March. So contact me in uh, January so we can check out your test your product as well. It's a real feedback. It's not, mm. you know, I want to get off, get rid of you. You know, so yeah. you're just bothering me. I love that. I love that. So for listeners and watchers, if uh, you want to find out more, again, this is in Artmit's LinkedIn profile, and I'll put the link in the show notes and the description on our YouTube video. So please check it out. So, Ahmed, as we're coming towards the end of a beautiful chapter with yourself today, uh, the question that I love to ask all of our guests is, if you could imagine a couple of years ago, you got this young Ahmed who was thinking about going into politics and then kind of shifted and went a different way, what three bits of advice would you give to a younger version of yourself? So, first would be, you know, value your time because it's really important. Mm -hmm. The second one would be just keep your feet on the ground. Don't fly <laughs> <laughs> too fast. Don't try to go too fast or just, you know, mm. fly too high. Yeah. Keep your feet on the ground. And the third one would be, you know, work is, not everything. So mm -hmm. there are, you know, life is full of beauties, but if you can see it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you know, value your beloved ones, you know, your family and your friends and just give them the right amount of time. I that would that. be it. I love that. So obviously, like, be mindful of the time that you have, use it wisely, stay grounded, don't try and run too fast or fly too fast, keep a nice steady flow, uh, and be present, you know, with what's going on now yeah. and the people around you and work is just work and there is more to life than work. Uh, yeah. So make sure that you give that time to everybody as best as you can. I think those are some solid bits of advice, Ahmed. So Ahmed, uh, are there any shout outs or kudos that you'd like to give in today's show? So first... My two cats, of course, <laughs> Meow. They, they are making me hard time sometimes to work. You know, they just want to, that I pet them. So, you know, they're just <laughs> coming into, in front of the camera in the meetings. <laughs> yeah. But this time they are not sleeping. So <laughs> we had a good time right now to uh, do the uh, podcast. And I would love to give it also to my, all my, people i've met so far almost every one of them i learned lots lot of lots of things from them and actually they are we are the builders of the idea of sales fellowship i'm not saying you know i'm a well super intelligent guy i did it all by myself i even we didn't talk about sales fellowship they just you know some guys give you ideas after the meetings you know some things came to your mind and I want to thank everyone, everyone I met so far. And yeah, this is my second shout out to 90 people. <laughs> I love that. Like they say, it takes a team to build a village. Uh, and those are amicable shout outs as well, Armin. So thank you so much. And I also want to say a big thank you to all of our listeners uh, and watchers on today's chapter. Just a general reminder, if you're listening to this in your local podcast platform, please give us a rating uh, and feel free to share the episode. And if you want to leave a voice note, just visit the show notes at the bottom of the podcast and you can record a response. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, please make sure that you like, comment and subscribe and give us your feedback because Ahmed and myself are all about feedback. So let us know in the yeah. comment section below. But Ahmed, uh, again, I've learned a hell of a lot from yourself today, sir. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank I wish you, you, your cats, and Barack, your wife, a great week. And most importantly, Ahmed, happy selling, my dude. <laughs>